Hey there everybody in Airland, land, Dave Adams here with Budget Audio File and I wanted to shoot a quick video because I just wanted to give an update on just the basics that have changed around. Really all I've done is change some configuration, put some speakers on their own amplifiers and uh, that's really it. Not much has gone on. I just got through watching an awesome movie, 1917, fantastic movie, and uh, it put me in the mood to show you guys what we've got going on. So let's just start right out. All right, so jumping right in, you guys remember these bad boys. These are my SCAR SDR-15s, uh, bridged down to two ohms. These things are amazing. Each of these are now on their own amplifier channel as they were sharing one before. I get much better output and much better control now that I'm actually able to put these things on their own amplifier channel. And the output is just phenomenal. These three alone are absolutely rattling an entire 1200 square foot region. And it's just ridiculous how good these things sound. I absolutely love these subwoofers. Uh, you can see we've got a two in one configuration. I thought about adding another one sub down here just to see what that would sound like, but this is only a 5.8 cubic, uh, this one right here is only 5.8 cubic feet, whereas this is eight and a half cubic feet. So each sub gets 4.25 cubic feet uh, to play with, whereas this one would only, you know, equate to about, what would that be, uh, two and a bit. Uh, yeah, just under three cubic feet for each sub. While that may work and that may model well, I think I'm just gonna leave that guy by itself and it plays really well in there. Sounds amazing. Those bombs exploding in 1917 were really set off by this trio right here. And uh, there's nothing like having three 15s, you know, of, of course in conjunction with the rest of the stuff going on, but there's nothing quite like having three 15s kind of just shaking your house around. So um, yeah, absolutely love this. And uh, I, re I highly recommend these guys if you're in the market for budget conscious, if you're like trying to do the budget audio file thing and you want a great set of subwoofers for your theater, check out the SCAR SDR 15s. I think these things go for just over a hundred bucks each. Um, and that's like shipped to your door. Uh, you could buy three of them. You, you could buy two of them with an enclosure for just over 300 bucks. So I would say go with that, hook them up to an external amplifier and just send it. Uh, really, really amazing subwoofers here. I think you guys will really like them. Uh, I know I do. Wow, the lighting here sucks. Okay, so uh, this corner is just terrible lighting. I'm sorry. Anyway, we have three RSS 390 HFs over here. Uh, each of them in their own six cubic foot enclosure. Actually, this one's 5.8 cubic feet, but we won't hold it against it. Uh, these things sound amazing as well. Each of these has tremendous power handling and they go exceptionally deep. Uh, Aluminum cones on each one of these and long throw excursion uh, surrounds. These guys reach all the way down to 10 hertz and below without, without any, you know, breaking zero sweat doing it. These things absolutely love digging deep and they love getting loud. Um, I showed in the last video that these three by themselves were pressurizing a 1200 square foot enclosure to 126 decibel, I believe it was. I'll show some B-roll in here, hopefully, and uh, we'll get that going. But yeah, 126 decibel from these three subs right here. And I, it's just phenomenal when they all start working together when it really climbs up to. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, um, if you have a little bit more money to spend than you, than you would on the SCAR uh, SDR-15s, consider getting a few of these guys in your theater as well. The, these are the Dayton Audio RSS 390 HFs. They sound fantastic. It's the same configuration as before, except now this guy is on its own amplifier channel. So each of these has its own amplifier channel, whereas before we were bridging these things down to a single amplifier channel. Now they're all on their own. So those three are each on their own amplifier channel. These three are on their own amplifier channel. It just means more control, more headroom. We're not stressing out the amplifiers as much, which means you can turn it up louder and get better sound throughout the entire uh, bandwidth. All right, so getting down and dirty with my front stage right now. I'm sitting on the floor. I freaking love these quick videos. Uh, still my MTX TP 2400s with modifications by yours truly. Crossovers have been changed out. I'm still rocking the, the default drivers in there, but I do plan on replacing all three of the, these drivers with a sub bass driver. And then we're going to go with a mid woofer for the top one. So we're going to have a 12-inch mid woofer, a 12-inch uh, sub bass driver. Of course, matched across the three because we have the same matching electronics and the same matching tweeters. We just want, I just, I like making things my own and I never like the way things sound from the factory. So I always have to do little tweaks, little things to kind of make it my own, put my little DIY spin on it. Uh, you can see the sub 
sub, those subwoofers have changed around a little bit. Um, I took the two Dayton Audio Classic uh, 18s that were up here. They were in a horizontal configuration, and I put them in a vertical configuration over here, and they it just they just woke the entire theater up. Whereas before this was over there, and I was losing decibels, I have just f it picked up all the decibels I was losing by putting that guy over there. So. Those are over there picking up those DBs, and they're all, they are now on their own individual uh, amplifier channel as well. Whereas these guys were sharing an amplifier channel before, they now each have their own amplifier channel. Uh, we're we're maxing them out. I really would love to give them more than 500 watts each, but that would just get dangerous. So I've got them running at 500 watts apiece. Not the most powerful, uh, not the highest power handling subs out there, but. They do dig deep when they want to, and where it really makes the difference in my theater is in that I would say 50 to 100 hertz. That's really where those things shine. And at 50 hertz, even down to 40 hertz, those things sound phenomenal. And I've heard them down at 20. They get down and dirty at 20 hertz as well. But really, they love picking up where these things start to maybe slow down a little bit. And uh, it just wakes the entire theater up. Sometimes what I'll do is when I'm in the mood to just see what each of my subgroups will do, I'll turn, I'll turn everything off except for those two right there. These two guys are right there. And um, I'll just let them rock the theater by themselves. And they do a great job, whether I'm watching like Live, Die, Repeat, that sign, that crazy sine wave intro, or watching like, you know, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse or any sort of crazy movies with a lot of thunderous, deep, you know, rock and bass, these things can do it as well. And because they're so musical, they handle what I'm, you know, just jamming out to music down here as well when I'm vacuuming or doing construction work. And we'll talk about some construction work coming up here in a second. All right, guys. So you guys remember these. These are my latest build. 8.6 cubic feet each gross. Uh, net is about 8.1 cubic feet. Uh, each enclosure. Dual 18s from SCAR. Those are the SCAR SDR 18s. These things are bridged down to two ohms and they are absolutely screaming. Uh, they dig so deep and get so loud. The only thing I've done differently is I built, as you can see down here, I built a kind of a, a bench for them to go on a rail system, so to speak, for them so I can push them clean up against the wall because I've got, you know, the wire tracks and stuff running back there so that, uh, you know, for the baseboard. So I have those up on there so I can push them back. It also gives some better separation and decoupling from the ground when they're sitting on those things. So that's always a bonus. And again, these things dig down into the single digit frequencies. I've got my high pass set at 10 Hertz and they go way down to 10 Hertz. No problem whatsoever. These are another pair of speakers that sometimes I will just turn the rest of them off and just let these things shine because they absolutely pressurize this entire theater by themselves. And I know I say that a lot, but uh, uh, when you have that this much space and you're trying to, you know, thunder it in with some subwoofers, sometimes even big speakers can sound a bit anemic when you've got that much pressure. So it's nice when you've got a pair of 18s going on and they can absolutely just reach down into the low double digits, high single digits, and just, you know, every bit of over 100 decibel while they're at it. Okay, so I mentioned some construction work that we have going on, and I just want to touch on that really quick before I end this video. This right here, you guys remember this, this is my nine cubic foot enclosure with a sound cubed HDC 318, I believe it is. Anyway, what I wanna do is I wanna take this and I wanna, I'm gonna pull the driver out and I'm gonna reface it. I've got a piece of MDF over there. I'm gonna take that piece of MDF and I'm gonna reface it. So we're gonna liquid nails it down and then border up the edges, silicone it closed, and then we're gonna cut out a new face for that. One, it'll kind of give me a better aesthetic feel about it. I'm, the, the driver is kind of off center and now that, you, now that I mentioned it, you can't unsee it. Uh, the driver is slightly off center from the uh, middle of the enclosure. I would like to center it better. And two, it would put, you know, bring the driver a bit more forward and then open up the enclosure some. So we might go up to like 9.1 cubic feet. Who knows? And really that's it. As you can tell, not a whole lot has changed. The Atmos speakers are still the KV6000 with my modified compression drivers. I'm still amplifying these things with Behringer amplifiers and the Fidec that's in the back and the Pile PT8000CH that we've got rocking now. Some of the smaller or lower power drivers, I should say. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I just really want
wanted to update you on that because I'm super proud of where this is coming along. And yes, there is still a lot of work to do. I want to do some more aesthetic things like, you know, wall treatments, acoustic treatments and things like that. But as far as the drivers go, I may build some more boxes. I do want to put one more 18. I'd like to have six 18s and six 15s kind of for that even number because it's just driving me crazy having 11 subwoofers. Um, I would like to have one more 18 just to kind of even things out. And I think that's really going to be about it. Now, I know I said that last time and then I built two more 18s, but I might actually mean it this time. Actually, I might not. I probably don't mean it this time. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that was it. Quick and dirty video. Everything else, everything besides what I mentioned is absolutely the same. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, check us out on Facebook. Check out some of our friends like Dacoustics and Hexibase. Um, and hopefully you guys get a chance to uh, experience some of this madness for yourself. If you guys are, you know, trying to build some theater stuff, comment below. We'll talk theater stuff. We'll talk sound. We'll talk bass. Obviously, I love bass, right? So, yeah, let's, uh, let's get out of here. I'm going to get to editing this video together, and we'll get it posted, and hopefully it'll be a fun time, and you guys, I didn't bore you guys to death. Anyway.